For one of the heaviest women in the world, shedding 800 pounds was just the beginning of a new lease on life. After all, Texas prosecutors had charged her with a crime that could have sent her to death row. So coming clean meant more than just shedding pounds. It also meant shedding light on a dark family secret. Here's ABC's Ryan Owens for our series, Crime and Punishment. On this week after Thanksgiving, plenty of dieters are watching what they buy at the grocery store, but no one more than Myra Rosales. No cheeseburger, no hamburger, no burger at all. This Texas woman used to weigh more than a thousand pounds. She was one of the heaviest women on planet Earth. Today, she's one fifth the woman she was just five years ago. How much weight have you lost? I have lost over 800 pounds. That's four good-sized men taken off of That's your body. That's four good-sized men. Are I you... used to take up a, a whole king-sized bed. I think it's fair to say when a lot of people see you when you were at your heaviest, they think it's disgusting, hard to look at. What do you think? It's even hard for me to look at it. I don't even know how I survived that. Back in 2008, Myra wasn't just facing death from obesity, but from a lethal injection. The state of Texas had charged her with murder. This woman is almost is a half a ton. Why are my tax dollars keeping this woman alive? Yes, just five short years ago, she was perhaps the most reviled woman in South Texas, nicknamed the Half Ton Killer. Why is Why she in jail? Charged with murdering her tiny nephew by falling on the two-year-old, crushing the boy under the bed. Myra is stating that she lost her balance and that she actually landed on the child, crushing his head. Her capital murder trial would be nothing short of a freak show. A defendant so big she had to be cut out of her house and transported in a moving van. And it cost so much to move her, her attorney even measured the courtroom the width is 130. and went shopping for a king-size mattress. We need to buy a mattress that'll support Right. A thousand, over a thousand pounds. Sure, sure. So she could live in the courtroom while a jury decided if she lived or died. Myra admitted she killed the child but claimed it was an accident. Her attorney never believed that. We knew that Myra was not being truthful. And suspected she was covering for someone. I try to protect my sister and I was already dying. I was going to get capital murder charges. The death penalty, possibly? The death penalty. I really saw it like they were doing me a favor. Myra lied for months, but even prosecutors started to doubt her when the little boy's autopsy revealed head trauma consistent with repeated abuse. In the face of that scientific evidence, Myra finally told the truth. She'd seen her sister Jamie abuse her little boy, and working with her attorney, she even recorded her sister confessing. That's it right there, right there. Jamie's accusing Myra of testifying against her. And Myra's telling her, hey, I haven't said, made any statements. I didn't tell him how you hit him on the head with a brush. A logical person would say, I didn't do it, it wasn't me. She would acknowledge, and she wouldn't resist the implications for Myra. Charges were dropped against Myra and her baby sister Jamie was arrested on child abuse charges and is now serving 15 years in prison. I was not doing right. I was willing to give up my life for her. Does she appreciate what you did for her? I know she regrets what happened. It's hard for someone to admit what they did, especially to their kid, and turn their, themselves in and confess. I think she did because she could not live with herself no more with what, what happened. One, two, three. With her name cleared, Myra moved to Houston and began round-the-clock treatment from an obesity doctor. She's diabetic. She has significant congestive heart failure. She probably is very close to going to respiratory failure. Her first 10 days in treatment, she lost 100 pounds. Next, Myra endured a half dozen surgeries, some to remove tumors, others excess skin. She adhered to a strict, high-protein diet. She had to lose 600 pounds just so she could safely have gastric bypass. Her transformation was filmed for a new documentary on TLC. I think it's a miracle of God that I'm healthy, I'm alive, and... And I'm not diabetic, I, I do not have cholesterol, I do not have high blood pressure. 
So I go. I, I am healthy. It's possible just to, to, to take 800, subtract 800 pounds from somebody and they can walk around like normal. And now you're okay. And now I'm okay. And my organs are perfect. <laughs> it's crazy. Yes, I'm looking for some uh, clothes, like for job, something nice. Yeah. These days, the new and improved Myra occasionally gets reminders of her old life like letters from her sister behind bars. She showed me a recent one where she says Jamie wrote she wanted her to take care of the surviving children who are now with their ailing grandmother. She says, that's why I want you to promise me, please, that if I am still in prison and I'll go and something happens to our mom, that you will take custody, custodia of my children. Myra visits those kids often. These drawings are from a recent trip. She says the children call her mom. Do you think you will be able to get custody of them at some point? I'm working on it. Uh, I'm in the process. She says those kids are the main reason she's still alive and her incentive to keep losing weight. They were the first to know when I was able to stand up for the first time. And then when they saw me walking, and they saw me walk in the door. They were very excited. Just to see you walking? Just to see me walking and very happy. So they really have provided a huge motivation. They are my motivation. A woman who's lost so much, but somehow seemed to gain so much more. I'm Ryan Owens for Nightline in Houston.